In this pelvic ultrasound, is this condition a purely radiologic diagnosis? The answer is no. And the diagnosis here was polycystic ovarian syndrome, abbreviated PCOS. Although an individual may have a sonographic appearance of polycystic ovaries, i.e. polycystic ovarian morphology, the diagnosis is not made unless two out of three of the following criteria are made in reproductive women. One, polycystic ovarian appearance, which we'll get to later. Two, clinical or biochemical evidence of hyperandrogenism. And three, chronic and ovulation. PCOS is a complex heterogeneous syndrome of ovulatory dysfunction, menstrual irregularity, and androgen excess. What we mentioned earlier was the Rotterdam criteria, initially developed in 2003 and revised in 2013. Most recently, in 2018, there was an international consensus guideline, which changed the number of ovarian follicles for the diagnosis. One set of criteria say there should be more than 20 ovarian follicles measuring 2 to 9 millimeters in size, and the ovarian volume should be greater than 10 milliliters. Be sure to avoid any false elevations in volume due to underlying corpus luteum or dominant follicles, which may necessitate a repeat ultrasound. In terms of the differential, ovarian morphology alone is insufficient for the diagnosis of the syndrome. Anytime you see an enlarged ovary with multiple peripheral follicles, also pay attention to ovarian torsion, especially if the patient is symptomatic. In this ultrasound in a different case, we see ovarian volume less than 10 milliliters. However, there were multiple follicles measuring between two to nine millimeters in size. The follicles are peripherally distributed, giving a string of pearls appearance. MRI is not routinely warranted in the investigation of PCOS. However, pelvic MRI may show similar features as on ultrasound. For example, on this axial T2 weighted image, we see multiple T2 hyperintense peripherally distributed follicles in both ovaries. Here's how it looks on coronal MRI. Histologically, as seen on the left image, the outer cortex is collagenized with several follicle cysts arrayed beneath it. The right image shows a prominent band of luteinized theca cells surrounding the cavity of an atretic follicle, i.e. follicular hyperthicosis. Signs and symptoms include anovulation, which manifests as oligo or amenorrhea, hyperandrogenism, which manifests as hirsutism, i.e. increased hairiness. There's also associations with metabolic syndrome, so patients may be obese with insulin resistance. Lastly, there are associations with endometrial cancer. A major risk factor for this malignancy is prolonged exposure of the endometrium to unopposed estrogen that results from anovulation. Treatment for associated infertility includes ovulation slash induction therapy. Treatment should also be addressed towards associated hirsutism and metabolic syndrome. In conclusion, Sometimes it may be better just to label your finding slash impression as polycystic ovarian morphology. Alternatively, one can just give the follicle number and size, and together with the ordering clinician, a diagnosis of the syndrome itself can be made collectively. You now know a lot about PCOS. Please subscribe from our awesome anatomy and radiology videos.